Hi everyone, Christopher Ludwig here with AMS, here in the heart of Munich, just a few steps away from BMW's headquarters, from the center of the city, and right here at the beating heart of the company's production network, its mother plant, Plant Munich, which for exactly 100 years has been driving production and changing every step of the way with the group, from producing airplane engines and systems, motorcycles, uh, ICE engines, dozens of different models, more recently hybrids, PHEVs, and since this past autumn, the pure electric i4. It's a transformation that has never stopped and won't stop further, uh, as the plant is in the middle of, of preparing for a new electric vehicle architecture, the Neue Klasse. And today, we have the privilege of getting to see this transformation in action. Uh, we'll be going into the plant, seeing some of the stations that are being transformed, understanding what they mean for the production system, for technology, especially for the people, skills and trainings which will be required, and also for sustain what it means for sustainability. Our guide for this tour will be Dr. Peter Weber, who since last autumn has been the plant director and is going to help oversee this transformation. So it's really exciting. It's an exclusive look inside this transformation as it's happening. And I can't wait to show you all. So Dr. Weber is just arriving in a brand new i4 electric vehicle. Let's go meet him. Hi, Peter. Good morning, Christopher. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to Plant Munich. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here and welcome you on behalf of our global audience and AMS uh, for this fantastic opportunity to tour the plant, talk about the transformation coming. So, Peter, the first thing, as I took the U-Bahn here today, I had to think here we are in the middle of a city. It's not a usual location for a plant um, with, with, with traffic and all of the usual things. Do you have to take some additional precautions already to manage disruption and traffic for a plant like this in the central city? Yes, Christopher, you're absolutely right. So it's a specific boundary condition for running a plant in an urban environment. Every day we are producing more than 900 cars and we are able to produce ICE cars, plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles on the same production line. We consider the limited space within our neighborhood a big advantage. A big advantage to install a very condensed value stream across all technologies, from press shop via body shop and paint shop to final assembly, including all logistic processes. So we are able to run a flexible as well as efficient production in an urban environment. And based on our transformation, we are already preparing the next step for our plan. So we're definitely going to talk more about some of that trans transformation coming. But this is the 100th anniversary of the plant, exactly this year. Um, what makes it so relevant in 2022 and for the years to come as it was in 1922? The continuous transformation of our plant across the last 100 years is part of our DNA. So we ramped up the plant by producing air plant engines. Then we continue production by focusing on motorcycles. And since 1952, we are producing premium cars. So transformation is part of our DNA. And it's very important to consider the decisive key, key success factor. So it's our people. Our people are the base for our transformation because it's their commitment for our plant. Always find a flexible solution to every problem the passion for building cars, delivering premium cars to our customers, and it's their skills. Always optimizing our processes. But very important is having a look at our transformation. It's a very clear strategy being the base for our transformation. So there's a clear step forward towards electromobility. So again, coming back to the logistics, here we're standing at a gate where there's, there's going to be lots of trucks coming, coming in and out, again in the middle of the city. Um, I know one of the key initiatives for BMW is to make all processes more sustainable, including the logistics. Uh, projects like LNG, powered trucks, or even electrified trucks. Can you talk a little bit about how that's being applied already uh, at Plant Munich? So we are already using LNG trucks as well as electric trucks to transport components and parts between Plant Munich, Plant Dingolfing, as well as to our logistics center. So it's already part of our daily business. It's state-of-the-art technology. Regarding our future, we have a very clear roadmap towards a CO2-free as well as a CO2-neutral transport between 
this corresponding logistics center and plan unit. Fantastic. And coming back to logistics again, another important aspect for, for any, any plant is to have good visibility uh, on the material flow uh, and on the production sequences, especially perhaps in these times of disruption. Is that something that the MW, would you say, has a good control of? Or is it something that colleagues are needing to work every day in effect to, to change variations and react? So we are accelerating the digitalization of all processes across the entire value stream, including all technologies. Transparency based on the corresponding digitalized process is part of our daily business. So we have full transparency regarding the supply chain. So we can, be, we are able to already identify upcoming disturbances to install or to implement preventive actions. Now, we, we all know the supply chain has been, remains, and remains highly disrupted, whether it's been from the lockdowns, from the uh, semiconductors, and of course, the recent Russian-Ukraine crisis. How, what lessons uh, has the plant learned? How are you managing this ongoing disruption? So you may have recognized that I'm repeating the term flexibility. From our point of view, flexibility is really a key success factor for a high performance production. Regarding the corresponding impacts of the corona pandemic, the semiconductor shortage, as well as the war in Ukraine, we are as flexible as possible within our production. Uh, what do I mean by that? So first of all, we have implemented a very high flexibility within our technical production system so that we are able to shift volume between different cars on the same production line. In addition to that, we have a very flexible workforce to be able to produce different work content in the same production station. And we have a great variety of shift pattern to scale up or scale down our production volume. Finally, what's very important at that stage is we are able to ramp down and ramp up production very fast. And this flexibility is the foundation for our task force that we have implemented, comprising purchase department, engineering department, sales department, planning, as well as production to define what are the right measures to react to those immediate impact. So flexibility and transformation in the DNA of the plant and indeed in the group, that's something we're gonna talk a lot more detail in, but I'm really keen to show our audience some of the transformation that's happening. And I think we have a really interesting overview model that I would like to take a look at. So let's go check it out. So oh, here we have the beautiful plant in all of its glory. I believe 3D printed, in fact, um, uh, locally at the, the R&D center, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with this overview of the plant, Peter, can you give us a sense of what's being transformed? What's the next stage, particularly in preparation for the Neue Klasse? The transformation of plant Munich towards electromobility comprises in total three phases. In 2011, we have installed a new press line into the existing pressure building representing the latest state-of-the-art technology. Within the first phase, we have prepared the plan for the production of the current three series, including the first plug-in hybrids. And this first phase comprises the update of the existing assembly process, as well as the installation of a new paint shop and the installation of a new body shop. Within the second phase, we have prepared our production for the launch of the i4, the first BMW fully electrified Grand Coupé. We have also updated assembly as well as body shop processes. But in parallel to the launch of the i4, we have already started the decisive third phase of our transformation towards electromobility. We have taken the decision to reallocate the engine plant to Plant Steyr and plant Hemsol. Uh, end of 2023, we will stop production within the engine plant. Then we will generate the space for a new assembly as well as logistic building. And I will demonstrate the corresponding changes within our structure based on the corresponding models. So this will be the new assembly. And this will be the corresponding pre-assembly and logistic area. So this is the first major step. 
The second step includes the installation of a new body shop. So at the moment, we are already demolishing the old paint shop to generate space for the new paint shop, is the new, uh, for the new body shop, sorry. The new body shop will be installed next to the paint shop to realize the most compact value stream within our plant. Um, I mentioned already within the introduction that the limited space from our point of view is considered a chance. And let's have a look at the updated value stream within our plant. So we will start production within the press shop. So parts will be transported to the new body shop. The white body will be painted in the existing paint shop. And then the painted body will be transported to the final assembly, including all logistic processes. So it will be, in a way, even more efficient yeah. than it has been previously. And the compact value stream for us, it's very important to concentrate on cross-technology value stream. Because you can imagine it's all about people and it's all about communication across all technologies. And this condensed value stream is a perfect foundation for cross-technology communication. From this um, optimized value stream, that we, which you've just de demonstrated, uh, I'm also quite aware that there is a, a digital twin representation of, of the plant, and I believe other plants in the BMW network that, um, that you work on. Can you tell us more about that process and what it will mean for the production planning here? Yes, so you're absolutely right. So at the moment, we are generating a digital twin of the existing production structure and all underlying production processes. In addition to that, having a look at the new buildings, we have digital models of those body shop assembly and logistic structures. And this platform offers the opportunity to integrate the digital twin of the existing production structure and the updated or new models of the new structures. In total, we are able to realize a very fast, precise, and efficient planning of our transformation based on the digital twin and the integrated new models of the new body shop new logistic and new assembly building. So it's actually helping to speed up the, the change process in that way. One of the other things about our location here, when we can see everything together in the headquarters, and I know nearby is also the FITS, the R&D center. Does this give you an opportunity in the living production to in introduce technologies, innovations, perhaps even faster than elsewhere? So from our point of view, the very direct and open communication between engineering department and our production expert is really a key success factor. Because you can imagine it's very important to ensure a mutual understanding between engineering and production. And just give you one example, if we think about a future project and the integration of a new product into existing production system, it's very easy to explain to our engineering partner opportunities as well as restriction of the existing production line to our partners. So we have a common understanding about opportunities as well as boundary conditions that need to be taken into consideration. And in addition to that, when we focus on innovation, so we can support our engineering partner regarding the industrialization of product innovation. But finally, we can also offer the chance to explain production-driven innovation to our engineering partners. So you're absolutely right. It's a win-win situation to have a very short distance between the R&D center and the production plant. So now from this overview of the model and the sense of the digital transformation that's happening as well, I think it's time to show our audience some of this transformation in action, go inside the plant and see some of the changes. So why don't we go check that out? From the model to reality. Exactly.
Okay, we had to get ourselves ready, as you can see, because now we're really in the thick of it. This is BMW production, as I'm sure no one, most of our audience has ever had the opportunity to see. We're standing, I believe, in, the, in what was the, paint sh the prior paint shop. And it's, as everyone can see, a real construction site. There's building happening right behind us, all around us. Um, Peter, can you, can you tell us a bit about this process here, managing this construction right in the middle of production, whilst on the other side of the wall, production is ongoing? Christopher, I'm convinced this is a very impressive example that we are running production while transforming our plant at the same time. So we are demolishing the existing paint shop and there is an ongoing demolishing work and at the same time we are already installing the pillar for the new conveyor bridge. So it's a very intensive cooperation between our construction partner, our planning department and production to ensure that we can do both jobs in parallel. And I think this is also a very good example that transformation is a continuous process and it's very important to ensure that we can do both jobs at the same time. So the transformation of Plant Munich is becoming reality and this is our step forward to realize and implement the iFactory. Our production is and will be lean green and digital. So Peter, as you said, everything is happening in parallel with the production and the construction. How are you ensuring that this construction can happen and without disrupting the existing facilities and, and ongoing production? To ensure that we can continue our production while transforming the plant, it's very important that we have a very close cooperation between construction experts, planning experts and our production team. In parallel, while we are demolishing the old paint shop, we are still keeping the existing conveyor to transport the white bodies from body shop to paint shop. And you can imagine it's a very high risk that some of the construction workers will touch or even damage the existing conveyor. So it's very important to have a very close cooperation. In addition to that, we have performed very comprehensive risk assessment for all construction work to define preventive actions and what's most important, trust your team and support your team. Absolutely. So uh, the reason that we're, that we're building this is obviously for the Neue Klasse and this EV-centered architecture. Um, the I-4 was able to use the existing body shop of, of the plant. Obviously, there's a new architecture. So tell us a little bit about why that needs to be and what are some of the key, let's say, production impacts from that. The foundation of the Nauer Klasse is a corresponding BAF-centric product architecture. And one key element regarding the new body shop is that the main floor of the new Neue Klasse will be a different one to ensure that we have a BAF-centric product architecture. And that's the reason why, based on the new main floor, we have to install a new corresponding production equipment for this part of the car. Regarding the additional production equipment of the body shop, it's a question about what is the life cycle phase of the existing production equipment in the running body shop. And we have also taken into consideration that we have a parallel phase between production of the existing three series, four series models and the integration of the new models. So we have to consider three aspects the corresponding product architecture of the Neue Klasse, the life cycle stage of the existing production equipment, and how to manage the parallel phase about the existing production and the integration of the Neue Klasse. So there's a lot of exciting things to cover there. I suggest we go into the plant now and get a look at, at already what, what some of the transformations that have come, and we can talk a little bit about, about more how the Neue Klasse will impact that there. So sh shall we head into the plant? Yes, of course.
Okay, Peter, well, here we are finally in the plant. And there's no more exciting place to be, right, in the middle of the action with every, everything happening. We're standing in front of an important location, the Hochzeit, the, the marriage location between the chassis and, the, and what would always been the powertrain, but now, of course, we have the battery. Um, this is obviously important for the, uh, for the I, I4. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening here, some of the key changes that perhaps took place uh, in building the battery electric I4? So regarding the integration of the I4, it's very important to understand the value stream. So the high voltage battery model is produced at Plant Dingolfing. So the first challenge that we have to master is to ensure the logistic process to integrate the corresponding area into this building that we are able to integrate the logistic process into this building. The next step was to integrate the corresponding adaptations into the existing production line because from our point of view, in regards of flexibility and efficiency, it's always key to integrate the new derivative in the existing production line. So therefore, we have adapted the corresponding station to produce all derivatives on this production equipment. We have also added the corresponding pre-assembly processes to prepare the delivered battery module for the final assembly in the Hochzeit station. As you've just mentioned, there are four powertrain variations moving, moving behind us through, through on the same line. Um, how much complexity is that bringing into the production here in Munich? Uh, and how complex is it for, for you to manage that? When we talk about complexity, we are very much focused on the integration. And for us, system integration is really our key performance. And from a technical point of view, it's a question about how can we integrate the additional production equipment into the existing production station. And in addition to that, the major challenge is to qualify our workers to manage all work content and also be able to shift between the different derivatives. So you mentioned the workers there. I think that's a really important point that I did want to go back to, both for the I4 production, which we've already integrated, but also for what's coming in, in the short future in the, with the Neue Klasse. What would you highlight as some of the really important skills that you're focusing on for your employees here? So when we talk about our people, I already mentioned we have some key characteristics. It's all about commitment, passion, motivation, and you have the right qualification. And that's the reason why we spend a lot of effort in training our people to master the work content and to be prepared for the electrification. In addition to electrification, we also train our people in regards of digitalization and what's very important regarding process specialists and maintenance. So qualification is really key of our transformation. So I want to come back to, to the Neue Klasse now because again, in the next few years, uh, there'll be a totally new uh, assembly area for this. Uh, we've, we're standing in where the new, new body shop will be. Can you talk about what some of the production advantages and efficiencies that this new architecture is going to bring to Plant Munich? Please accept my apologies that I can't explain the details of our new product actually right now. Um, we have one common approach uh, within our technology clusters, comprising purchase, engineering, and production. And the major target is to reduce complexity within our product architecture, to reduce complexity within our production system, and to reduce complexity within our supply chain. So one key characteristic of the Neue Klasse is reduce complexity. Okay, so I, I think this, uh, this, this reduction of complexity is going to be an important theme in, in the future. Um, we can see that the plant has come to a, a, a short pause, so I think that's a good cue for us to go to, to our last stop. And we have a few questions I'd like to just look into the future a little bit more with you, Peter. Would be a great pleasure. Great. So Peter, I wanted to just take a few hundred moments to look back a bit and then look ahead. So firstly, you were most recently in the UK, where many of our uh, audience indeed will be, will be watching. Plant Munich and, and, and Oxford have a few interesting commonalities, being in the center of a city and also recently having integrated some, some electrification. Can you tell us a little bit about your time there and what lessons you've brought, you're bringing to it here, to Munich? 
I made the experience that every technology is very much focused on optimizing the technology's processes itself. This is the prerequisite. And really the big challenge is to optimize across technology value stream. On the one hand, it's a challenge, but on the other hand, it's the biggest lever to improve quality as well as the overall performance of production. And this was for me one major experience that I made in UK. Of course, it's uh, wonderful to be here in Munich in the mother plant, but uh, are there anything, anything you miss from your time in the UK? Uh, so, I think it's obvious I miss the team at Plant Oxford. It was really a wonderful time spending with the team. Um, but to be honest, I also miss fish and chips, sausage roll, and uh, driving my Mini and exploring Great Britain and the beautiful landscape. Well, we'll definitely make some arrangements for the next time you come, you come to visit. In your career, you've also uh, been in Leipzig, Plant Leipzig, uh, where the, the i3 obviously was, was first produced. So you've, in many ways, worked across the journey of electrification at BMW. What do you reflect when you look back on where it started with the i3 in terms of production versus where we are now with i4 and, of course, are going with Neue Klasse? Mm -hmm. I think this is a very good chance to explain the journey towards electromobility from a product point of view. So the i3 represented the first phase of our roadmap towards electromobility. And it's very important to understand that the i3 was designed for a dedicated purpose for commuters in an urban environment. And we have shaped a very specific product architecture to meet the corresponding requirements. So we have introduced a so-called live drive architecture from a product point of view. And it's obvious we have shaped and designed and implemented a corresponding production system with special focus on the i3. Within the second phase, uh, we have extended the electrification within the existing product portfolio. So that means we mastered the challenge to integrate the electric powertrain into the existing product architecture. The third and next phase will be the design and the integration of the Neue Klasse. Exciting. So lots to come from the production side. And of course, we're 100 years from the start of, of Plant Munich. Um, there's, I'm sure, another 100 to come. But if we're looking out more immediately, uh, there's recently been some, some architecture prizes looking to how the plant works with the community. Um, what would be your reflection on the next, let's say, phase with the Neue Klasse and beyond for this plant in terms of its future with BMW and its future in the city of Munich? So from my point of view, there's a very strong link between the product roadmap towards electromobility and the production roadmap towards electromobility. And the continuous transformation of plant Munich, I think it's very clear. And what's very important, we have a very clear vision regarding the production system, which is the foundation for the transformation. It's the eye factory and the key characteristics are lean, green, and digital. With a very clear focus on Plant Munich, and you mentioned the specific boundary producing in an urban environment, we have started a competition with architects focusing on the integration of a production plant into a city and to improve the integration of a production plant into the neighborhood. And this is the additional aspect that we would like to focus on, not only developing the production system, but also developing the integration of our plant into the city of Munich. Well, it's an exciting future. Lean, green, digital is something we're very excited to keep up with and to keep up with you with on. So we really thank you for taking us through the plant today, talking about the journey, and we can't wait to, to share the journey with you as you go ahead. Thank you so much. Christopher, thank you very much. Thank it was you. a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye. So there you have it, folks. The Neue Klasse will, me, will bring a new class of production to BMW. Lean, green, and digital. Um, we have a lot more to come. Um, I know there's been lots of questions that you've been putting through uh, for, for Peter and BMW. We will make sure to gather these questions, get as many answered as we can, and share back with you. Uh, but for now, um, just want to appreciate the time we've been able to spend here and share with our global audience and you can be sure there's a lot more to come on this journey which we're going to be covering at AMS and at AMS Automotive Evolution. Thanks very much.